Anyone working with generative AI knows there's always a chance the next result turns out unusable. In the comments, I often see a clear gap between user expectations and what many platforms actually deliver. That gap is a real pain point, and that's exactly what this video is about. Money doesn't grow on trees, that is a truth most of us are very familiar with, but using different AI platforms seriously and on a regular basis can demand a surprisingly high monthly toll. This is especially true for those who cannot and do not want to limit themselves to just one or two tools or a handful of features in order to do their work properly. The frequency of testing also plays a major role. The stack of coins that still sparkles on your desk at the beginning, and yes, I know exactly what I am talking about, can shrink down to a few cents much faster than expected. That is why it becomes so important to take a closer look at where expenses can be reduced to a reasonable level. Over the years of working with generative AI, I have learned quite a few lessons and paid my share of tuition fees that really did not have to be paid. This tutorial on saving costs with AI is split into two parts with a total of 19 lessons. In this first part, we focus on lessons one to eight, cost traps and fundamentals. These are not timeless truths from Socrates, Siddhartha, Gautama or Confucius but they are personal experiences that highlight where money is often lost and where optimization potential tends to hide in the middle of the current AI rush. It is incredibly frustrating to pay for services twice, to buy credits that never get used, or to repeatedly receive unusable results as a reward for those investments. Maybe one or two of these lessons will offer a useful impulse and help streamline or improve your own workflow. Lesson 1. More text does not automatically mean more performance. Let us compare Higgsfield and Freepik for a moment. Both are API-based platforms. Higgsfield does not hold back when it comes to bright colours. Labels like most popular and best value almost force your eyes in a specific direction. All that is missing is a flashing GIF and the motivation package would feel complete. You see terms like 365 unlimited, unlimited, five free generations, 4K, 2K, highlighted in yellow and green. You definitely do not need a degree in mathematics for this, but you do need to invest time to understand what all of this actually means. If you look more closely, you will notice a small and rather faint info icon that you can hover over. Only there does it become clear what is really included and what is not. Freepik looks a bit calmer and easier on the eyes, but the mechanism is similar. Two-tier plans are clearly framed and labelled best value and expert choice. Just like with Higgsfield, the real information sits in the details. Unlimited video generation also comes with clear limitations. The video AI model, WAN 2.2 is restricted to 480p, while Kling 2.5 is limited to 720p. And we already know that both WAN 2.6 and Kling 2.6 exist. You can observe a similar pattern at Kling itself. The developers introduced an unlimited mode for image generation with image 01. But again, if you pay attention to the details and check the small info icon, you will find that unlimited only applies for one year and only for subscribers who signed up before December 15th, 2025. My takeaway here is simple. Do not get distracted by labels and visual noise. Listen to the community absorb both positive and negative feedback, and then make a conscious decision based on what you actually need. Lesson two, hit the off switch and do not overcomplicate things. This is one of those lessons that would have saved me a lot of time and money more than once. When working with AI, there is a strange zone somewhere between motivation and madness. In simple terms, it is that inner voice saying, come on, one more try and this will definitely work. This idea assumes that pressing rerun or generate just one more time will suddenly lead to a significantly better result that finally matches the prompt. In my experience, this is pure wishful thinking. If there is sand in the gears, meaning a small, easily overlooked word in the prompt that completely derails the generation process, then the fifth or even the tenth attempt will not fix it. I really do not want to think about how many credits and how much time disappeared that way. If you find yourself stuck for whatever reason, my advice is very simple. Stop clicking, generate. Turn off the computer, go eat something, meet friends 
or take the dog for a walk around the block, then come back with a clear head. More often than not, things suddenly fall into place. This approach saves money and helps keep your motivation intact. Lesson three, but I get way more credits, right? The inflation of terms can be a real obstacle. Are we talking about credits, fast hours or tokens? Does any of this actually have the same value across different platforms? For less experienced users, it is easy to miss the bigger picture and lose orientation in the middle of all this. Let us look at monthly subscriptions in the lowest tier. FreePick offers 7,000 credits for roughly $9 in its essential plan. Design gives you 900 credits for $8.99 in the beginner plan. OpenArt offers 4,000 credits for $14 in its essential tier. Leonardo provides 8,500 credits for $12 in the apprentice plan. Pixverse gives you 1,200 credits for $10 in the standard plan. One.video offers 300 credits for $6.50 in the pro tier. Each of these platforms uses a completely different internal pricing logic for what those credits actually buy you. If a platform promises 100,000 credits, but a single video generation already costs 100,000 credits, that impressive number becomes meaningless. You always have to relate credits to what you can actually produce with them. This is why direct price comparisons across platforms are, in practice, almost impossible. Interestingly, Higgsfield once tried to address this themselves. On December 16th, 2025, the platform operator described their own service as four times more effective than others. Lesson four, subscription or pay as you go. One of the most fundamental decisions is choosing the right platform model. If you go with a subscription on a native platform such as Midjourney, Runway or Kling, you get direct access to the services and features straight from the developer without restrictions. The downside is that you are locked into that ecosystem. Kling users, for example, can only work with Kling AI models. The alternative are API-based platforms that offer subscriptions with a wide range of included services. Examples would be Higgsfield, OpenArt, FreePick, Artlist or Crea. Through the provider's interface, users can access models like Kling, Seedance Pro, Vio, WAN, and others. This often includes image generation, image editing, video creation, and depending on the platform, additional features such as background removal, upscaling, lip sync, and more. The main thing to watch out for here is overlap. Paying for several of these subscriptions at the same time often means paying twice for very similar capabilities. A third approach is a very deliberate pay-as-you-go setup via API. In this case, there are usually no subscription fees at all. You simply top up a balance and consume it step by step. Examples include file.ai or replicate. The big advantage is cost transparency. You pay exactly for what you use, nothing more. Prices are usually clearly displayed. The downside is that costs are fixed and discounts are rare or non-existent. Just to clarify the basics, API stands for Application Programming Interface. Very roughly speaking, Kling as a native platform allows another company like Higgsfield to access its models through an interface. Higgsfield can then integrate models such as Kling 2.6 into its own web interface. As a user, you are not using Kling 2.6 directly on the Kling website, but indirectly through Higgsfield.ai. Lesson 5. Subscribe or not and how to test a monthly sub. With the rapid progress of AI, many young startups see their chance to enter the market with clever and innovative workflows alongside already established big players. Not long ago, I read a comment that summed up a very common reaction quite well. What, another new platform already? This feeling can easily throw users off balance because the fear of missing out is always there in the background. Most platforms offer subscriptions with either yearly or monthly billing. My advice here is simple. If an offer sounds interesting, try it first. Even if the monthly price looks a bit higher, start with a one-month subscription. After a few rounds of testing, and usually you realise this very quickly, you will know whether the platform actually delivers what you need. If it does not, cancel the subscription before the month ends so your account is not charged again. Just be careful with so-called one-month-only subscriptions. Those often make no financial sense at all. Lesson 6. This subscription is the right fit. Going yearly. 
Once you are absolutely sure that a platform does exactly what you need, it makes sense to think long term. The potential savings can be significant. Switch the billing option from monthly to yearly and you will immediately see how the effective monthly cost goes down. I have no connection to any of the platforms shown here. They are used purely for demonstration purposes. The listed prices reflect what was shown on the provider's pricing pages at the time this tutorial was created and may change in the future. One question usually comes up at this point. Which tier should I choose? My advice is to not be guided by labels like best offer. Pick a plan that is financially comfortable for you. Upgrades are always possible later. As a simple rule of thumb, an upgrade only really makes sense once you are regularly using more than 80% of your available credits. Lesson 7. Cancelled subscription and what happens next. I am generally a loyal user and I do not cancel subscriptions lightly. But if you notice that a provider is clearly falling behind the competition and the results are repeatedly unusable, cancelling can be the right move. The important part is to avoid wasting what you have already paid for. If you still have credits left on the last day of your subscription, they are usually deleted when the plan ends. In most cases, there is no refund and the credits are not kept in your account until you decide to use them later. The account itself may still exist, but the paid balance is gone. Keeping an eye on this alone can save you unnecessary losses. Lesson 8. Choosing the right video AI model. With Kling, the cost structure can feel surprisingly inconsistent. Using image to video for 5 seconds still costs 35 credits with a very old 1.6 model. The video 2.1 master model jumps all the way to 100 credits, while the newest 2.6 model without native audio, in professional mode, is down to just 25 credits. That naturally raises the question of why older versions are still active at all, since they mainly add confusion for users. My advice here is simple. If you're using Kling's native platform, make very deliberate decisions about which model you use for which task. And most importantly, if you don't need audio, always turn native audio off. That alone can cut your costs in half. After these first lessons, it should be clear why many costs don't come from the AI itself, but from the decisions made before generation even starts. In the next video, the focus shifts away from traps and toward leverage. It's about how to get much further with the same budget by making smarter choices in tools, workflows and overall setup. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for listening. See you soon. Your channel, AI Now You Know.